Reese Watkins, Baby Goose. Yes, sir. Thank you for doing this. I seriously, I appreciate this taking the time to do this. Of course, man. Of course, of course. But uh, yeah, four and zero professional fighter off of a flying knee knockout, which was fucking yeah. sweet. Yeah. So very important first question: What does swinger get swung? <laughs> um, it started as kind of like a joke, uh, because uh, I used to play uh, Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah. Um, it's a video game, and uh. You know, it's, it's split into like attackers and defenders. Mm -hmm. And there's for a long time, there was a, a advantage to attackers, basically. So basically, it was like shoot first and uh, you win pretty much. So the okay. person who saw saw someone first and shot first usually won. Um, and I was like, hey, that's pretty good. And so I just started saying it. And um, I'm like, this kind of applies to fighting, it especially applies to how I fight. Um, you know, with a lot of, lot of pressure and uh, I like to get inside and throw uh, combos. So I just started saying it and uh, it kind of stuck and, you know, more and more people started saying it. So I was like, hell yeah. And then uh, I knew it like stuck for real <laughs> when I was sparring. I was sparring out in Vegas and um, Kurt, Chris Curtis, was, he was like helping me for a camp because he, he had just torn his hamstring. So he was watching. He was watching my rounds and, uh, you know, I just wasn't going. He was like, Reese, <laughs> swing or get swung. Like he was saying that. While I'm sparring, and I was like, "Ah, oh, man, like it's 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 made it for real." So, oh yeah, yeah. that's sick, yeah. dude. Do you ever watch uh, what's his name, Jinxie? Yeah, yeah, yeah dude, yeah, that yeah. guy's funny Sometimes. as shit. Sometimes, yeah. So I see his clips a lot. So he's pretty funny. I see the clips all the time on TikTok. When yeah, I'm sitting there, just like scrolling. He's a funny <laughs> yeah. ass dude, right? But so four and zero as a professional fighter, what does that look like when you're at a stage? Because we were talking before this thing started, and you were like, "Hey, look, I really want to get." into some larger organization, like mm -hmm. national organization mm -hmm. this year. So when you're 4-0 at the regional level, you're trying to make that jump. What does life look like for you? Like training, are you working outside mm -hmm. of just fighting? Like mm -hmm. what's the makeup? Um, so for me, for most guys, um, but for me personally, um, training is like a job. So, mm -hmm. you know, I work part-time in a bar. Um, I'm a bar back and I work about, you know, 25 hours a week at the most, but I train probably like 30, 35 hours a week. Like, you know, I'm in the gym training or driving to the gym doing something. So basically we treat it like a job and I've been training like that for like two years, pretty much. So before I was even making like any money fighting, still amateur, I was training twice a day. Like I was a professional. Um, like I used to work at UPS mm -hmm. when I was 19. So I would go into work at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., so like 8 a.m. or 9 a.m., get off work, go to the gym, come home, go to sleep, go back to the gym, go back to sleep, and then go back to work. Um, what the I did fuck? that for, <laughs> 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 I did that as an amateur. Because I uh I did that, what was that before? Was that before I dropped out of school? Um I, yeah, that was before I dropped out of um college, like right because I took a gap year in between high school and college and I worked at UPS. So I did that for like Nine, ten months, just five, six days a week, UPS, gym, sleep, UPS. I was drinking like a bang or two a day, trying to get to the day. It was rough. So basically what it is, what life is like now is trying to set your set yourself up to be ready to take that opportunity. So, yeah. Okay. So training twice a day, grappling, strike, or like what's that? Um, me personally, I do... I grapple more than I strike, actually, now that uh, think about it. Um, I know, like, I'm a striker, but I spend a lot of time wrestling, a lot of time doing jujitsu. So, like, Monday is usually wrestling. Tuesday's sparring. Uh, Wednesday's grappling, and then I do pads. Thursday's sparring, and then more grappling. Friday, I don't really train. Saturday is sparring or grappling or something. And then Sunday is more grappling. <laughs> so, most of my time, I actually spend... Like on the mats, majority of it is usually wrestling or jujitsu or MMA, like you know, or or um, MMA with a focus on grappling. And then, um, yeah, and then outside of that, I'll do strength and conditioning um, either in the morning or in the evening, depending, mm -hmm. on, depending on if I work or not. Okay. Yeah. So all of that, you I mean, that's a crazy amount of time to be putting in in a yeah. fucking gym, especially <laughs> as an amateur when you're not even getting paid for it. But yeah. Was that, did that make the jump you think easier going from amateur to yeah. the regional fights? Yeah, for sure. Um, it did. Um, I'll say, you know, for, for me, that jump, nothing really changed as much like training wise. I just, 
kind of did the same thing I was doing and it made it pretty easy. Okay. What changed competition wise? I mean, from opponent speed, mm-hmm. everything going mm-hmm. from amateur to regional fighting. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a little faster. Um, the gloves are obviously smaller, but the best way I can describe it is, uh, it's sharper. Um, so, you know, you like, you probably like, you know, like a slap feels like, yeah. It can kind of feel more like a slap, like getting hit because there's so much, there's less padding on the gloves. So it's a little faster like that. So, but, and then the, you know, the rounds are two minutes longer, but uh, other than that, I was already doing like five minute rounds in training. So it wasn't that big of a deal, but I say that little, uh, that the gloves, the little padding, the gloves, it's like more real. So that's, that's the biggest thing. You get more nerves for the pro fight than the amateur fight? Same nerves, same no, everything? No, I was always like the same amount of nerves. So, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, you're pretty open on your your TikTok, which yeah, is funny yeah. shit. I was telling you before yeah. about being nervous and everything, which is, it seems like the a lot of people are like, no, nah, bro, I don't feel nah. fucking nerves. Like, I'm nah, fearless. Nah, man. Most people, if someone says that, they're either lying or crazy. You're like, you get the actual like crazy person who just doesn't care. They just show up and fight. Um, but no, everyone's everyone's nervous, you know, cause like this is hours of your life, especially if I got one fight, that's probably like six or eight weeks of, you know, work on top of years of work to get to that position and uh, everything can change in like a, a moment. So yeah, yes, yeah, nerve wracking. Don't really get to make too many slip ups. Otherwise no. she yeah. gets kind of gnarly. Yeah. You were talking a little bit about, I think, so you had a gap year mm-hmm. you were fighting. Were you trying to train when you went off to college and take fights? Though? Yeah, I was. Um, I went to Howard in D.C. And then uh, I trained at uh, Ryan Hall School in 5050. Okay. It's uh, right outside of D.C. So I was uh, going there. And um, I was part of not Not his school was part of the reason I dropped out, but because I wasn't able to go as much as I like because uh, I stayed, excuse me, I stayed like right in the heart of D.C. Um, I don't know if you know where Howard is, but it's like in D.C. proper. Okay. And Ryan's, Ryan Hall School, 50-50, it was in uh, Falls Church, okay. um, Virginia. So it was at the end of the metro line. So to get there, I would walk a mile to the metro. Then uh, I would take two different metro lines. I have to switch. So that would take 40 minutes. Then I would walk another mile to a school. Then I have to do the whole thing back. So, yeah, it was a, like getting there was like a 90-minute, two-hour process, you know? So I, and then on top of school, I was only able to do that like three times a week. So, yeah. Sit there, just got bored of school. You're like, what the fuck am I doing? I want to go yeah, fight yeah, people for a living. Really, yeah, yeah. I didn't really want to go in the first place. And I was like, okay, I'll try it. Um, because I'd gotten scholarships to go. Yeah. So I was like, you know, might as well. So I tried it and I'm like, this is not for me. And uh, yeah. So I took a fight. Um, I took a fight when I was coming back. So like the end of the first was it yeah, end of my first semester, I was getting ready for a fight and I took it west. Like I I fought as soon as I got back. And then uh yeah, and then I came back and then um, fought again at the end of summer. Um, but yeah, especially like when I first went up there, I went up almost on crutches because I I have fought um, like that Saturday and I flew to school on Monday, so I was still like limping around and shit. And uh, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The fight you took when you came back was that still amateur? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay. I fought uh, Emmanuel Osho. And then how? F- what's like the timeline between? Coming back from school, fighting that guy, dropping out, going pro. Like, what was that timeline? Um, you know, I fought him. I went back for my second semester. And then, uh, yeah, I dropped out at the end. Dropped out, flunked out. Same thing. Same shit. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. And I was, I was going to like lose my scholarships because I just was not trying. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, dropped out. And then um, I took a last amateur fight in August of that year. So the you know, semester ends in like May, mm. fought in August. Um, then I tried to fight again one more time, but the promotion just fell apart. And then the next year in April, I took uh, my pro debut. Okay. Mm-hmm. Did you say your grandma wrote you out of the will because you <laughs> yeah, dropped out dude. of college? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she put me back in. <laughs> now. <laughs> After you knocked yeah, the dude yeah, out? You know, <laughs> yeah, she saw, she saw that uh, I was like, like, this is real. Like, you know, like I was kind of good and I was making some money. But- for a minute, yeah, she wrote me out her will, bro. She was like, ah, you know, because uh, it's hard for people, especially for like, uh, understandably for my parents, it was hard for them to get. There's no like pipeline for MMA kind of like for football, play high school football, you go D1, 
Yeah. You get drafted, hopefully, or you go signed to a practice squad or baseball. There's no, there's no pipeline like that. So MMA, it's super random, right? You can come from wherever. Mm-hmm. So they didn't really get that. So I was trying to tell them like, no, 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 I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. But there's like no one I can really point to to like, you know, because everyone's there asking me like, well, what's your plan? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, you just gotta. I'm like, I don't really know. I don't really have a timeline. Just, just trust me. Just trust me. Just trust me. And uh, you know, they, they, it's hard for them to wrap their minds around, understandably. So yeah, my grandma wrote me out her will. Um, but uh, yeah, no, she put me back, so it's all good. So yeah, that's nuts. Do your <laughs> yeah. parents, your family, go to your fights? Yeah, 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 they do. How they do, do they handle that? Um, they're they're get, my mom gets real into it. She like doesn't watch any fighting except for me, and then uh, she's always like, the loudest one. And then my dad, he likes it, and then all his friends like it. So they 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 like it. That's sick. Yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking of like a mom sitting there watching her kid lock himself in a cage. No. And she's like, oh my God, <laughs> I mean, what is kinda, happening? She kind of does. Um, I remember one fight, my first pro fight, I like got on top of the cage. I was like flicking everyone off. And there's a photo of like my mom right under the cage. She's like, yeah, go. <laughs> and I'm like on top of the cage, just double birds, just flicking everyone off. So Hell yeah. You get to do whatever the hell you want after you knock someone out. Yeah, right. Right. Um, one of my sponsors just texted me. He's like, Yeah, me and the kids are watching. I went to be like, ooh, I don't know about that. Cause like I don't know what <laughs> I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm liable to say after if I win. So uh yeah. What's that feel like? You stop someone, you knock someone out. Like obviously I saw you at the 420 yeah. card and it was like it looks like you're on a fucking high when yeah, you dude, knock you that should, dude out. It depends. Um, that one was like a you know a big adrenaline. It's like an adrenaline dump, kind of you know, just on top of the world. The fight before that, I was actually kind of pissed because um, I won, but I didn't win how like I wanted to. Um, <laughs> so uh, I was like way more subdued, I guess. But uh, usually it's just like a yeah, it's everything just kind of melts away. And uh, you just kind of in that moment. So it's pretty cool. I was going to say, I could tell from the adrenaline dump, the dude that was sitting there, like I said before, that was like right next to me and the guy from Odyssey was sitting there talking shit. Yeah. He was like trying to pick fights with you backstage and you got on the mic and talked a bunch of shit back and then walked off. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. that man looks like he's on top of the fucking world. That's <laughs> sick. Yeah. Yeah. So. So you've got a fight coming up, what, uh, June 21st, mm-hmm, you said? Mm-hmm. So you said you're doing a six-week camp for that. Yep. So what is a what does a typical camp look like for you? Like the schedule you were saying earlier, like you're in the gym like 35 hours a week. Does that like stay the same? Does that go up? Like does it shift how you're training? Um, it goes, it's, The intensity kind of goes up. So, you know, you're usually like a calorie deficit. So you're a little more tired all the time. And then the intensity, everything goes up pretty much. So – Right now, like I'm in the gym, but just, I'm just like training casually, you know. Mm-hmm. But when that switch starts to camp, everything will go up. So like, you know, no rest rounds, no skipping that. Even if you're tired, you gotta go. Um, so it's pretty much just the intensity jacks up. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so you do that for six weeks. How much weight do you drop? Because you fight at middleweight, mm-hmm. which is 185. Usually, yeah, I'll start camp around like 214, 215. Holy shit! And then, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, <laughs> like two fourteen, two fifteen ish. Um, it depends. So sometimes I walk around like two ten. Sometimes I walk around like two fourteen. Just really depends. Then uh, I'll get down to like two o five, two o six. You know, like, like middle of camp, and then uh, I go into fight week at like one ninety seven ish. No, I go down from one ninety seven to one eighty five during the week. What does dropping twelve pounds of water in a week look like? Uh, <laughs> it, no salt. That's the biggest thing. Um, very little sodium, very little fiber, very little calories. Um, and then it's just, uh, lots of water. So it's not fun. Um, get lightheaded really easily. Um, you just kind of, I just kind of lay there when I'm not training. I just kind of like lay in my bed and just don't do anything. What do you what do you do when you're laying in bed? Make TikToks, watch TikToks, and <laughs> what are you doing? I just scroll TikToks on my phone, or I just read articles, watch movies, whatever. But I do stuff where I don't have to move. So. No thinking, no moving, just no moving, no thinking. Laying in the bed, yeah. Chilling. Like I don't, I don't play video games, where I just kind of sit there. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, something like that's too much brain power. So that's I fucking wild. Think. Uh, so for your camps, you do them like a mixture between going out to mm-hmm. Extreme Couture and doing mm-hmm. them here. Mm-hmm. Yep. You just split it like equal or? Um, I split it for how much I can have for it to split it. <laughs> so, okay. Uh. So, you know, I'm going to go, out, I'll go out there for like two or three weeks total ish. So like two, usually like two weeks. And then, um, yeah. And the rest of it I do here. Oh yeah. Um, 
What's it? Uh, what's training out there? Like I saw a video. You were <laughs> sparring Sean Strickland. It's, like uh, it's intense, man. Um, they're like no rest rounds. Rest are uh, like your rest rounds. Um, that person's still very good, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so um, yeah, I would say the biggest thing is like the intensity and like there's no slacking. So like if you're if you're, I remember one time, uh, because on Wednesdays we'll do a. Uh, wall work or we'll do wall work for like 60 or 80 minutes which is like wall work right wall work is the hardest part of mma and do that for a, a fucking hour so you know 20 you go for 20 minutes and then like a water break and then go back again and i remember one of the first times i was doing that um i was going with sean and who was i going with sean alex police and then uh john poppy and I was, I was tired i was like 40 minutes in it's like my intensity started to drop and sean just went like <laughs> he's like he's like Reese and I was like god, god damn <laughs> so I was like ah you know can't be slacking so I say that's the biggest thing is uh the intensity you know no one lets you it was great because no one lets you slack and uh someone's always getting ready for a fight so that's that's pretty much it that's nuts yeah what makes the wall work the worst part of it um because you're carrying someone else's weight and you're carrying you know you're trying to pin them up against the cage and you know, uh, they're trying to explode. So if you're on bottom, their weight's on you. And if you're on top, you're trying to put all your weight on them. So it's that like little leverage battle that makes it really tiring. Okay. Yeah. It's like lifting constantly over and over and over and over. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So all of your fights have been stoppages, all of your pro fights. And I think you said all of your amateur wins too, right? No, my first amateur win was a decision. Okay. But the rest of them were stoppages. How many amateur fights do you have? I had six amateur MMA fights and five amateur tie fights. And all but one have been stopped. All my, or all all my just MMA, MMA. Okay. MMA ones, yeah. Jesus Christ. So is that is punching power just something you're born with? Like you just are born and I mean, the one that I saw on 420, it was a flying knee. Mm -hmm. I saw a bunch of your highlights. It looks like you just have fucking hellacious elbows. Yeah. <laughs> like that's... Yeah. Is that how you stop most of the people's elbows, or no? It's usually a combination of strikes. Okay. Um, I like kind of, kind of like drown people. So I kind of, I kind of like mentally and like break them where you're just kind of getting hit so much, and then uh, being in someone's face is like really tiring. It's like mentally tiring, mentally draining, and it's physically tiring. So it's kind of like a culmination of strikes. And then I only have uh, like one like out cold like stop one shot knockout, which is uh. My second pro fight, I hit him with the elbow. He was like, done. But the ref didn't stop, so I had to hit him again. But uh, poor guy. But uh, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, that, that one, he was like out cold. Like I hit him and I knew he was gone because he hit the ground. He kind of sat back up, but his eyes are just like that, the whole like eyes glaze over thing. That, that's real. You can see it in their eyes. And he was just not there. And I went to celebrate and the ref was like looking at me and I was like, okay. So I had to hit, <laughs> I had to hit him again three more times. And then he was like gone, gone. And like his head was like like shaking. And now he was on the ground for a minute, like five minutes. And I was like, okay. But I, he was fine. He came back and got a beer after. And, uh, nice guy. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, but usually it's just the accumulation of strikes that end up to a TKO. That's fucking nuts. You're sitting there looking at the ref like, don't make me do this. No, for <laughs> real, bro. I hit him and I was like, I was like, bro, he's not there. But I guess you couldn't see his face because she was behind him. So. <laughs> But, but I don't know who's calling me, but still it was like, it was like, bro, that was, uh, that was rough. So Jesus Christ. You said, I'd seen a couple of the other interviews you talking about where it's like people break mentally. Is that a thing where you can kind of tell like when you're yeah. fighting them, it's like, yeah. okay, that guy's yeah. he's especially, gone. Um, especially cause I fought a lot of wrestlers and, uh, their shots get worse. Um, mm -hmm. that's the biggest tell that they're like, they kind of panic shoot or their shoot with their head down. That's a big one. Um, cause usually, you know, you're supposed to wrestle, keep your head up They're shoot with their head. They're looking down. Um, and you can just kind of see it. If you, especially wrestlers, if you, if you sprawl and stop them from taking you down and then hit them while they're getting up, they don't like that. So, because, you know, they want to get you to the ground. So if you stopping someone, stopping someone's shot is one thing, but if you sprawl and then hit them for making them shoot or hit them as they come in or, or getting back out, that's horrible. Because you're like, ah, oh, I can't get this guy to the ground. That's my game plan. And every time I try to do that, I end up getting get tagged. So, yeah, you can kind of see it on their face and then how their body language is. 
Okay. You get to sit there and then you're like, okay, now I've got you. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I can like, I, I can like tell him like, I got you. So, yeah. That's got to be a fucking wild moment where you're sitting there. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm thinking about it from the, the wrestler side. It's like, oh shit, my game plan for this is just completely out the window. This is not working. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, uh, I feel like now, you know, more people, well, opponents going for it will know that like, I can grapple. Um, but for a while, it was kind of like a, not like it was like an open secret kind of that people just didn't know I could grapple because, uh, I lost one amateur MMA fight and it was my second one. And it happened because I got held in the cage. So I guess people saw that even though it was old, they're like, okay, he can't grapple. Um, and then my first pro fight, I remember the guy tried taking me down and uh, you know, after I beat him, uh, he just, he said to me, he's like, I he's like, we need to think you could grapple. We need to know. I didn't know you could wrestle like that. Like after the fight, he told me that. So I guess, you know, like secrets out now, a secret, but yeah, I, I can grapple relatively or decently well so i just don't <laughs> fuck that just want to yeah yeah, yeah. Just, swing or get swung yeah, yeah yeah when it comes to the study the preparation side stuff is there like a bunch of film on the guys you're fighting typically usually, usually there's a good amount of film and then uh kevin my coach uh wrestling coach kevin shero he watches it and then uh wade powers will watch it there's another guy i work with and um wade and brantley but a lot of it is uh kevin kevin will just watch like everything like and find on them and then uh He'll do most of the, the film work. I say, do you watch film or you're just like, yo, tell me how I can fuck this guy I'm up? I'm just and like, tell me how. Because I don't like to, I don't like to have like a pre, a predisposed like image or whatever in my mind. You know, I don't want to like overestimate or underestimate the guy. So I just kind of like Kevin and other people tell me what they see. And then, uh, yeah, I just go from there. Okay. Do you feel in terms of the, the size, like fighting at 185, are you, you're like six foot tall? Yes. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm five eleven and a half. Half is very important. Every half inch counts. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that, do you want to drop down? Do you want to yes. stay at one eighty five? No, or? I okay. want to go back down to seventy. Um, I may not. Uh, because one of the the nutritionists I work for work with, she works with the P, uh, UFC PI, so like she's no very shit. good. Yeah, she knows your shit. Shout out to Heather. Um, so I need to get like a DEXA scan to see. Um. So the way I was describing it was, uh, <laughs> I said 85ers, you know, like a lot of them, I feel like I'm as strong as them, but they're wide. <laughs> I didn't say wide. I said the girthy, no diddy. <laughs> I'm like, but <laughs> like you wrap their arms around them to get like a body lock and like, oh shit, this dude's like, this dude has like size to him, you know? So I feel like sometimes I feel like I'm a little bit smaller. Um, well, not sometimes. I know sometimes I'm like, I'm like, I'm usually going to be shorter than most people I fight. Um, and then like the size wise, I feel like I can compete strength wise, but like height wise, it's weird. Um, because 85 is weird because it's like the weirdest division. You have guys who don't make 70 anymore. Then you have guys who are actually one actual 185ers. Then you have guys who should fight at 205, but are somehow so good at cutting weight that they fight at 85. So it's like, you have these three groups of people in one weight class. So it's a little weird. I was going to say, there's like the Yo Romero motherfuckers that you sit there and you're like, there is no way in hell. Yeah, or yeah, like yeah. Alex Pajero or whatever. Yeah. And like last, my fight before this was a little weird. I think I was sick or something. So I, like, I was going, I, it was at a catch weight of 190, but I was going into fight week at like 212. Right. And then uh, I got, I started cutting, water cutting from like 204 to 190. Right. And I walked back in the cage at 217. Right. But this fight, uh, weight cut was super smooth. I started cutting at uh like 193, 192. I walked back in the cage at 204. The fight before, or two fights before that, I walked back in the cage at 199. So it's been a little weird, but I think I've gotten it down to where I average out to walk back in the cage at like 204. But, you know, I'll fight someone who walks back in the cage at, you know, 210. So it's a little weird because, uh, yeah, you'll get guys who go into fight week at like 205, and then it was me who will go into fight week at like 197. So what? I would like to drop down to 170, but it's hard. It's hard. I'm going to say that's a lot of fucking body mass to mm -hmm. get rid of. To I think get. I can do it because uh, like where I cut from, I've cut from like 191 to 172 before. Um, it was how horrible. I was going to say, how <laughs> fucking miserable is that It was cut? horrible. It was awful, but I've done it. Okay. So I think... Um, especially because I put on more muscle now. So muscle holds more water than fat. Um, so it's easier to cut the more muscular, the more muscle you have on you. So I think I can do it. But um, at the regional scene, there's not really a big reason to. Um, 
But like if I get signed to like a big major promotion, I probably want to go back down to one seventy. Okay. Yeah. I say there's some tall motherfuckers that fight at one eighty five. Like I'm just I was like, wait a second, that's like even at one seventy, bro, you get like guys who are like six three. But one eighty five, you get guys who are like six three and like two hundred twenty pounds. So it's some bullshit. There was some dude on that card that fought. I think it was a tie fight, like way earlier on it, because mm-hmm. I was there for a couple of guys from Odyssey, yeah. and one of the guys was like six one one forty five, and I was like, what in the fucking yeah, toothpick? It's weird. It's weird. Just fucked up body sizes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, weight cutting sucks, but you know it's part of the game. So yeah, how hard is it? Again, going back to the extensive TikTok research that I did. <laughs> A bunch of the stuff was about like trying to get amateur fights, or not trying to get amateur fights, trying to get fights in like the local regional card. How difficult is that? Um, it can be a little hard, uh, especially because eighty five is already like a smaller division, so it was hard because of that. And then uh, it was hard specifically for me because uh, I guess you know guys were like a lot of a lot of guys would like watch my fights and be like, no, I'm not fighting him. It's uh, no, I get it. Um. You know, so it was it was it was frustrating for a minute. I just couldn't get anything. So you know, now it's a little better um, because I'm getting to the point where I can fight guys with more experience. Like commissions won't turn down uh, certain commissions. You have to have they won't let guys who are like thirteen and six fight someone who's like two and zero. So I'm getting to the point now where I have enough fights to fight you no know, more people. Mm-hmm. So you know, but for a while it was, it was rough. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I would imagine, I mean, what is the matchmaking process like for that? I mean, are you, so for, you fight for NFC, are you like signed to NFC or was that just for like that one particular card? So this time I'm signed, I signed a two fight deal Okay. with them because I fought uh, Josh and I'm fighting Lewis, but usually no, usually um most regional scenes don't do multi-fight deals. It happens sometimes, um, but most of the time, no, people just fight from place to place. And then uh, not until you get to like LFA, sometimes CFFC or Cage, War- Cage Warriors where they do uh, multi-fight deals. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's where you start to make a little bit more, a mm-hmm. little bit more sponsorship. Yep. You have a manager that like handles your- Yeah, I do have a okay. manager with a sucker punch. Okay. So yeah, they're great. They sit there and like, they go find the fights for mm-hmm. you. They do all that shit. You don't have to sit there and DM matchmakers. Nope. They do it. That's convenient. Or like I, uh, if I see something I like, I'll send it to them. And then they'll be like, okay, we're, we'll try to get that for you or something like that. So, yeah, yeah. They, they handle that. Okay. So, going out, you said it's kind of pricey to go out to Extreme Couture, a lot of the stuff that's out there. I mean. Well, it's just pricey because uh, I get to stay with my friend, um, Tyler and Heather. Big shout out to them. But uh, it's pricey because I'm not working. So, yeah, you know, I have to have money saved because that's time I'm spending not working. Mm-hmm. So, that's the, that's the biggest part. Okay. Mm-hmm. But, so, going from there, you said the jump from, like, amateur to – Going into the professional scene, it's like it was a lot uh, sharper or like snappier. I forget exactly how you worded yeah. it. So then you get out there and you start training with people that are like legitimate. Like you, like we were saying earlier, you're sparring with like Chris Curtis and Sean Strickland. Is it just that to another level? Like they're just that much sharper or like it's just the speed aspect or how's it get different? Um, the best way I can describe it is uh, it sounds dumb, but like they're in the UFC for a reason. So mm-hmm. that kind of sounds like dumb on the surface but generally like i can compete and hold my own to an extent you know um so like you know sparring is not the same as fighting but i'm not gonna go get like just beat to shit sparring except for uh roman <laughs> roman always beats roman delizia always beats beats me up but uh <laughs> um but uh i'm not gonna get like absolutely like just like 10 eight round every time right you know i I can like hold sometimes i can like win quote unquote win rounds you know um but you know if i win a round i'm trying like 100 percent. so i'm not like trying to knock them out but i'm like there's no slack in my game like everything's firing you know i'm like 100 percent mentally focused and they just might be like flowing or working you know um so the biggest thing is that just little little small details they don't make they don't make they don't make simple mistakes as much. So, uh, like, one thing is uh, a good way to illustrate is, uh, like, slipping head kicks. You can slip head kicks like you lean all the way back, right? So, like, a lot of guys um, back home, like at Lima or whatever, I can kind of bait them into throwing a head kick or I'll slip it. Because a lot of times head kicks and body kicks look the same for a trajectory until, like, until like halfway. They kind of look the same. You don't know where it's going. 
but it's too if something's already there halfway, it's kind of too late to slip it. So you see guys sometimes they try to slip a head kick and it ends up hitting their body, right? So to to slip a head kick, I'll throw a head kick and then I know that they're gonna want to get it back. And so I, I know it's coming, so I can slip it. That won't work as well, much like in Vegas, because they don't just make like simple mistakes like that. Um or uh like I sparred um was it Jamal Hill? Oh, um, oh yeah. Yeah. He has a really, really high fight IQ. I don't know um, how to like put it into words, but you just kind of like feel it. You kind of like feel him like watching you. And then he just finds little tiny little openings like that. Or like Sean. Sean kept hitting me with the same shot over and over and over and over. Um, like three or four times he went with the same exact shot because he'll wait for me to do the same exact thing. And he'll just find that one moment. And just every time I did that same mistake, he'll just capitalize on it. So little things like that. There's like uh, little small details. That that's where that's what separates people that are good from people that are great. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Especially like you were saying earlier, like in MMA, it's like you don't really get. I mean, you you fuck up one time, you get hit with a flying knee, boom, mm-hmm. fights over. Like, mm-hmm. sorry, that's a wrap. So yeah, you got to be literally on point the entire time. Yeah. When so you work in a bar, do people? I mean, you're hanging out in bars. The people ever like ask you what you do, whatever you start talking about fighting and then they just start like trying to bow up on you. Is that a wrap? Um, no, it's not like they try to fight. Um, cause I don't, I don't, uh, I don't talk a lot <laughs> outside. Okay. I just kind of like keep to myself a lot of times, but, uh, sometimes they're asked about, you know, fighting and they're like, Oh, you know, um, I gotta come see you fight, but I've only, you don't really get that as much as that. Oh, Oh, you fight? Oh, I beat your ass. No, that doesn't really happen as much. Um, I was gonna say that's all. No, but uh, although uh, <laughs> my my manager was joking, he was like, "I'll spar you." I'm like, "Dude," he's like, "He's like, I'll spar you." He's like, "You should come play basketball." I'm like, "I'll play basketball. I'm horrible at basketball." But he was joking. He was like, "He's like, I'll choke you out." And I was like, "I was like, bro, when I come play your sport, I'll just show up. But if you come play my sport, you have to sign a waiver." So, what the fuck? <laughs> like you have to sign a waiver before you come play my sport, bro. So I uh, just, just, just joking. But he was just joking. But like just stuff like that, back and forth. Um, no, like a lot of my friends actually, especially uh, I have this one friend from uh, college. He always shit talks me, bro. He just he talks the most shit to me. He's like, you won't do anything. He's like, I'll beat your ass because I'm not gonna like attack him. But oh my god, he's just always, he's always in my fucking ear. He's just always gaffing, bro. And I was like, god damn, bro. So that's, that's fucking kinda, wild. That's kind of I'm cool. I just let it go. <laughs> I was about to say, what's the alternative? Just like take your day out on a new <laughs> right? train. It's like, yeah, I'm like, ah. Uh, you know, 4-0 just, MMA fighter beats the piss out of some right? dude that has never trained a day in his life. Right, like, right, all right. Yeah, I'm going to go to jail, so. <laughs> this Atlanta dude, you'll be fine. <laughs> right. Yeah, true. <laughs> Motherfuckers act wild. Yeah. But, so going forward, you're fighting this dude on Jan- June 21st. Mm-hmm. You said you were trying to get in some sort of shot like later this year, like you applied to Dana White's Contender Series. Is there, I mean, stupid question, but assuming the UFC is like the goal for you, or is it like, hey, I just want to go where I was going to pay me the most money, or is it a combination? It's a combination of both. You know, UFC is obviously the ultimate goal, but if, uh, you know, I just want to be able to make a living fighting, so being able to completely support myself, um, you know, making enough money fighting, so wherever that is, I'll take that up, take that opportunity. Okay, Mm -hmm. that's sick. Sorry, I keep going back to the notes thing here. I like wrote down a shitload of questions because I was like, I don't want to have a brain fart in the middle of this yeah. thing and feel like a moron. When you were talking about uh, dropping out of school too, basically said, hey, look, dropped out of school, the whole thing with the grandma. <laughs> you, I think I saw in some interview, you said you got hit with a knee in your first fight and you're like, oh shit, I should have yeah, stayed in dude, school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got this scar right here. I still have it um, from where I got like stitches out and all that. Yeah, he hit me with a knee, and I was like, ah, man, why am I doing this? I'm like, this is fucking horrible, bro. <laughs> yeah, I almost got knocked out. And uh, yeah, that, that was a moment. It was like a oh shit moment. Um, but yeah, there's sometimes, you know, while I'll be like super tired or whatever, I've like trained all day, then I have to go to work, and you know, I'm tired, I'm hungry, and I'm like, bro, why am I doing this? This is stupid, bro. But then I was watching, like, I keep, <laughs> I keep all these like, Edits saved on my phone. It was like different fighters. Just like I'll watch. I'm like I gotta lock in. I gotta lock in real quick. So I'll log back in. I'm like hell yeah. But nah, man. Sometimes, sometimes I'm like, why am I doing this? This is this is stupid as shit. Dude, so. you're fucking good at it. Apparently, man. <laughs> you're fucking four and zero. Oh, yeah, stopped yeah, all man. four dudes. You fought yeah. professionally. That's that's sick. Spite. 
Spite is the secret. Spite? <laughs> <laughs> just being bitter, dude. Yeah, dude. Just especially I don't get gaslight myself, bro. I'm like, everyone hates me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like everyone hates me. They want they want to see me lose. Uh <clears throat> sorry. I was telling my coach, I was like, Yeah, dude, I actually don't want to fight in Georgia again because uh, you know, I have like crowd advantage. I hate that. I want I don't want <laughs> I want I just want to show up. I want people not to like me. I want to go out there, beat them, leave, go get some food. Like just all the all the extra drama. So I like gaslight myself, bro. I just think about uh <laughs> I'll think about all the times I got curved. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my boy uh, Nathan, it's like forbidden pre. So I just keep I keep like a like a record. Like <laughs> I swear to God, I keep notes on my phone or just screenshots or whatever of it where I'll get curved, bro. And uh, I'll just I'll What the fuck? Yeah, I'll be like tired and all that. I just open up my phone, go through the notes. It's like, ah oh, man, never again. Look, like I so, could beat her beat her boyfriend's ass, her boyfriend's ass, her right, boyfriend's right. ass, yeah, her one boyfriend's time ass. Side of the was like, Reese, you're so funny. I'm like, Word, never again, bro. Cause I I would like shut my ass, like, you're funny. And I'm like, I was like, fuck you. But uh, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I played a cool banana. Yeah, I remember all the time. Yeah, so if you curve me, um, when I'm making a lot of money fighting, you're the reason. So thank you. But uh, thank you, and don't bother calling. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> fucking wild. <laughs> I respect the hell out of that level of petty dude. Like, no, nah, fuck you. Know, you. Petty. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't forget. So fuck yeah, that's awesome. I respect yeah. it. What's like the the worst shot to get hit with? Like, what's the what's the worst you ever been tagged where you're like, oh my god, fuck this? Like a liver shot, it's just liver get shot. bell rung, liver shot. Um, actually a couple weeks ago, what was it three weeks ago, Roman fucking kicked me in the liver with a spinning back kick so fucking hard, bro. And I swear to God, <laughs> I finished the round, but he dropped me for a second and, uh, I had to finish the round cause I got back up, but it's always liver shots, especially that he hit me with the back kick to the liver and I walked into it and it was horrible. Um, but liver shots are by far the worst liver shots are calf kicks. Um, cause I getting knocked out getting like rung like that you don't really like feel it for sure it's uh you, kind of, you feel like the effects of it but you don't feel it. it doesn't hurt in the moment but calf kicks and liver um yeah because they don't knock you out it's just all pain so what's it feel like when you get liver shotted um your body just kind of shuts down so like you've been hitting the solar plexus before yeah it's kind of like that except super concentrated and then it spreads to the rest of your body so like your legs go and uh it's just like a sharp pain and uh yeah, that's the best way I can describe it. It's just like hitting the solar plexus, except concentrate it, and then it goes down to your legs. Fuck. Your legs give out. Your legs give out from getting hit in the fucking liver. Mm -hmm. Fuck that. Because someone, uh, I don't know if, like, if it's true exactly, but apparently your liver has a bunch of uh, nerves on top of it. Like your nervous system is split into two sections, like automatic and... So it's, I forgot. I think it's sympathetic and parasympathetic. I something think. like that, yeah. yeah. So one of the groups of nerves has a large grouping on top of your liver, so that's why liver shots hurt as much as they do. So humans are made to get liver shot in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That is fucked up. You've been ta like tagged, bat, and obviously outside of the knee. Like when you get your bell rung in a fight, is it like you just your body start freaking the fuck out? You're like, all right, grab a hold of this guy and like get your feet back under you. Is it um, like, all right, time to swing on this dude? Like, what's the? No, usually it's like, okay, it's just like circle, circle, get back to where you are. Um, but I have been hit one time where I got dropped in my last amateur fight. Where I was like, okay, I got to wrestle. Um, Cause I'm getting dropped. The process was like, you just kind of wonder like what happened. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, oh wait, why am I on the ground? And like, everything kind of happens in slow motion. So you got to process it. But usually it's just like, okay, circle. And it's like, relax. You're fine. Didn't hurt that bad. And then, uh, yeah, get back to it. You like come to in the middle of the fight and you're like, yeah. oh shit, I got to get moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a fucking interview with a bunch of guys from Odyssey about getting like choked unconscious. And I was like sitting there and I was like, I can only imagine like if you get your bell rung and then you come to, and it's like the feeling from coming to after you get choked out, except then there's a dude that's like swinging and I've you're like, Oh been, uh, shit. I've never been put unconscious. I have no idea. But, uh, Dude, Definitely. I've been put out twice, and both of them were drilling. Neither <laughs> really? one of them were live rolling. <laughs> oh, my God. One of them, we were drilling, like, back triangles. And I vividly remember thinking, like, this guy doesn't have this choke. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to hang so out. Fast, and then I woke up, and Br I was like, what happened? And Brandon, who's one mm -hmm. of our coaches, was standing over me. He's like, you went the fuck out. That's what happened. And just, like, walked <laughs> off. And I was like. Damn, they ain't getting no water. Okay. Bro. Damn, Nothing. bro. That's fucked up. And then uh, another one. You know Brady Hilton? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brady was sitting there, and he was just being a fucking 
dork while we were drilling. <laughs> we were drilling like mounted arm triangles and he was just saying some stupid shit and I was laughing at it. And then I just like felt myself breathing. <laughs> and like, my, like it was all black. I just felt myself breathing and I was like, and then popped too. And I was like, what the fuck yeah, was dude, that? It's, it's, uh, getting rocked is like, um, they're like little drills we do where you spin around in a circle with your arms out like three or four times, like simulate it. So you're dizzy. So that's the closest thing I approximate it to. You drill getting rocked? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What so the like, fuck? So, I mean, you got to enjoy your response. You know, you got to know how you're going to respond. So, or like, you know, those, uh, those, uh, like, uh, you've been near playground and they have that pole that spins around really yeah. fast. It's kind of like that. I mean, that makes so much sense, but that's just such a wild thing to sit there and be like, okay, we got to drill how you're going to respond when your fucking legs don't work. Yeah, dude. What other crazy drills y'all do for in a fucking MMA context? Um, I was hitting pads yesterday and Brentley, we drilled knocking him down and then follow up shots on the ground. So, because uh, drilling, um, you know, not getting your legs sprawled out on, or not getting your legs uh, taken out from under you when you're, when the person tries to shoot in like a panic shot. Um, and then what other crazy drills? Um, I can't get over the 60 minutes straight of wall work. That sounds yeah, insane. That's the worst. It's horrible. You don't want to do anything for the rest of the day. It's kind of lay down. <laughs> I like, just lay in my bed. <laughs> just lay in my air, air mattress. Uh, yeah, because I stand there staring at the air mattress. So I just lay on my air mattress and don't do anything. That is <laughs> fucking um, insane. Yeah, that, um, but the drilling, drilling getting rocked is probably like the weirdest drill that I do. Yeah. I can only imagine. Mm -hmm. Sitting there spinning around. Yeah, you just spin out with your arms open and then uh, or literally just wide. like your arms out like that yep. and you just spin around like yep. a friggin' top. Yeah. You just spin around like three or four times and drill, you know. And then someone, yeah. Sometimes someone's in front of you or whatever, but Jill just getting your feet under you, moving, throwing a couple of shots, and trying to get regain like your balance and all that. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ! Uh -huh. Or uh, <laughs> I uh, the first time I was supposed to fight Lewis, uh, because he's probably gonna sell more tickets than me, so he's probably gonna have more of his people there. So I was drilling, uh, getting booed. <laughs> so I would, <laughs> I would put on like my walkout music or whatever. And then I, I edited in uh, crowd noises of like booze. So I'll just play it on repeat over and over and over and over. And then uh, I'll be like driving to work and I'll just listen to crowd noise. I'll just listen to people booing. <laughs> I'll just pull up like hour long boo compilation on YouTube <laughs> or whatever. And I just listen to it while I'm at like work or whatever. Yeah, and probably driving. fucking loved it because you like <laughs> everyone hating you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you ever had any fans do any like <clears throat> reckless shit while, like before a fight, during a fight? Um, you fought in Philly, right? Yeah. Oh my God, dude! Fighting in no fighting in the craziest was in New Jersey, man. Um, <laughs> not like they weren't fans of like me or whatever. Um, we were just watching the rest of the fights. Um, you know, after I fought, and uh, this dude from New York was fighting this dude from Georgia or like the country, <sighs> and uh, <laughs> so you know he's a Georgia, so he's wrestling the dude, obviously. And uh, you have all these guys, these Philly sports fans in New York guys. I'm like, Jimmy, Jimmy, those are muscles. Jimmy, they're steroids. Jimmy, they're just going off, yelling, 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 and whatever. You know, they're just getting rowdy and rowdier and rowdier. And, uh, but there's just one guy who's just supporting the Georgian for whatever reason. So he's like, fuck that. Get after him. Fuck him up. So, you know, just heavy ass accent. So finally, he's uh, like, we're all sitting in a row. He's right next to us. And then there's this old, uh, older, like, Philly Italian dude or whatever in front of him. So he gets up and he's like, you got a fucking problem with Jimmy or some shit. And he, he, uh, he fucking pulls up his shirt and he has a gun. And he just flashes his piece. And his wife is next to him. It's like, it's like the straight out of a movie. His wife's like 30 years younger than him. She's like, she's like no, she's grabbing his arm. He's like, no, no, calm down. It's, uh, they was getting like crazy. So we we're like, yo, we got to go. But we went to see the rest of the fight. So we just hung out by the entrance and like, so in case something happens, we get to be like gone immediately. But yeah, no, sometimes fans get a little crazy. Um, or the worst is like, you get someone who's like, man, I, I used to fight too or whatever. I used to spar. So I know what it's like. It's like, bro, I know you, 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 you sparred. You had like one amateur fight. Like it's not the same, bro. <laughs> like we're not the same, but they're just super drunk. And they're like, they're grabbing you and everything is like, get off me. It's like, like oh, telling you yeah, how yeah, like yeah. they're proud of you, like talking yeah, down yeah, to you yeah, and yeah. shit. So You're it's like, like, it's like, yeah, they're really like, man, it's like, man. Or the worst is like, someone would be like, you better beat, it's like, you better beat his ass. Well, like, what do you think I'm trying to do, bro? What do you think the plan is? You know, it's like, 
obviously that's the plan, dog. So it's like, get off me. I'll kill you. <laughs> get off me, bro. <laughs> but I was like, it's kind of I got a smile and wave, smile and nods. Oh, yeah. yeah. I saw you walking around before the before the NFC mm-hmm. fight. You had the belt and everything. And I wanted to go up and say something. And I was like, you know yeah. what? Never mind. I'm not gonna say shit to that man. <laughs> nah, like yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know where his head's at. Like Nah, yeah. I mean that that far before is fucking cool. But uh yeah, it's just when like fans get really drunk and try to talk to you or whatever. It's like uh, he's kinda gotta kinda go with it. So do the nerves kick in? Like, how soon to the fight do the nerves kick in? Is it like the night before? Because you said that far out, it's not really usually. Crazy. Um, usually, like after I weigh in, and then the closer it gets to the fight, the worse they get. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, dude, that NFC fight was was badass. Did you hear about the dude that pulled the knife out? Yeah, bro, my friend got tased in the face. Your friend did? <laughs> yeah, dude, it happened dude, like right friend. under us. Really? It was fucking wild. Yeah, dude, I don't know why they put twenty four fights on a car that was a horrible idea because uh they did it like again they did it like 20 something fights in january and mm-hmm. everyone was like this sucked <laughs> please never do this again but so bro that dude was doing some fucking aikido and, <laughs> like on that uh the girl he was like, yeah. apparently talking shit to some 14 year old kid apparently that's how it started this is all just absolute hearsay so whatever yeah. but he was talking shit to some 14 year old kid like in line to get food or something and then the guy's like the kid's mom was like, get the fuck away from my kid. And he like bowed up on the woman. And then like six dudes <laughs> walk up like, all right, you're not about yeah. to swing on this lady. And then he like backed up and started doing like this type of shit, like <laughs> squatting down. And then he straight up just pulled a knife. And that was a dude. Yeah. Picking. That was a wrap. Picking a fight at fights has got to be the worst place to do. Because we uh, when I was in Vegas this last time, uh, me and Kevin, we met uh, Tyler and Heather. We went to some PFL fights. Mm-hmm. And it's similar. I was like, oh, it's kind of like NFC fights, except everyone here is like really, really good at fighting. As opposed to like just kind of good, like knows how to fight. No, bro. Like they're like ranked UFC fighters, ranked Bellator fighters, just chilling, just walking around. Just everyone, because everyone kind of knows everyone. So everyone's kind of hanging out. And I'm like, this would be a horrible place to pick a fight because I know who they are, you know. But average Joe Blow or whatever who's just watching the fight doesn't know who, like, the number 12 ranked Walt Wade is. You know, but, like, that person, like, will kill you. So it's like, this has got to be the worst place to pick a fight. Because you don't know who they are, but, you know, they fight and their friends fight and everyone around you fights. So, like, and they're good at fighting, too. So, you know, they get paid lots of money to fight. So, and yeah. And one drunk motherfucker's like, Picking nah. fights at a fight is horrible. <laughs> you never will run well. So no one ever tries to fuck with you like while you're at anything like that. That's dude. No. I cannot imagine the misfortune of picking a fight with a motherfucker that literally is a professional fighter. Cause like <laughs> I, there's always like headlines and shit that'll come out. Like I yeah. saw one, it was like some dude in Brazil tried to rob some chick that was like, Oh yeah. yeah it was uh, like Polly Vienna or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, it's uh never had to like be the shadow of anyone in public. No. Um, it would always, when I was in high school, it would always be like, like dumbass friends. I always wanted to like slap box or wrestle. Or uh, <laughs> I went to this conference type shit in DC and this girl wanted to slap box. And like, I ain't no bitch. So I was like, word. And uh, yeah, dude, I actually hit the fuck out of her. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and now looking back and now, it's so stupid. But I, I had like just started fighting like for real, for real. So I was like, yeah, man. I was like, I'm like, I'll whoop your fucking ass, bro. But uh, because <laughs> I had to like, I had to like two fight amateur confidence. So I was like, I'll whoop the fuck out of anybody, bro. But as opposed to now, it's like, whatever, dog. It's cool. But no, back then I was like, what? What? Do something. So <laughs> yeah, she went to slot box. So I'm like, I ain't no hoe. So yeah, I hit the fuck in here. Uh, she like busted her lip. But uh, <laughs> oh my <God. laughs> yeah, it was bad. So uh, yeah, sorry, Kelsey. But um, yeah, dude. And then uh, at the same conference, there's like another dude who said he boxed or whatever. He's like golden gloves and like slap box. I beat the fuck out of him. Um, just <laughs> yeah, and then like a hotel conference room. Just I was like, pieces ass up, bro. But uh, yeah. So no, God, it was dude. mostly it's mostly my friends that was trying to fuck with me. Mm-hmm. Well, at least they're friends with you. Yeah, yeah. So not fucking yeah, up. They, they won't. They won't sue me. <laughs> I was about to say yeah. some dumb motherfucker pick a fight you yeah, yeah. slap the shit out of them yeah, they're yeah. like well my attorney yeah, it's like right, well right, don't right. start shit you can't back yeah, up but yeah. dude I really appreciate you taking the time to do this this has been fucking cool I think it's like right at an hour oh, cool. yeah we're like right at an hour cool. dude so well 
Baby Goose. Yes, sir. What G double O S E? Yeah, G double O S E. Remember it, bitch. Plug so, all your plug all your shit, yeah, man. Can talk follow me. Uh, talk whatever shit you want. To <laughs> who are the guy you're fighting? Whatever. <laughs> you can follow me at uh, Baby Goose MMA on Instagram and TikTok. And uh, Lewis, Lewis, you're a sad little bitch. Um, all you care about is clout. June twenty first, I'm gonna take the one thing you hold most dear to you, which is your image, your clout, your coolness. I'm going to take that in front of all your friends, all your family. I'm going to leave you uh, on the ground. Um, you're you're going to need another man's help to get up. So face down, ass up, no ditty. So, yeah. You're a bad motherfucker, sir. Thank <laughs> you for doing this. I appreciate <laughs> Thank it. Thank you. Hell yeah.